Welcome to this video. In this video, we will see how we can interface S7 1200 VLC with SC10 safety controller. This is going to be very interesting because we are going to use Profinet in this case. And later on, you will see an industrial example in which we will integrate our safety sensor in factory IO environment where a robot is doing pick and place operation. So we will see how our safety device can stop the operation. And later on, you will also see how you can bypass the sensors. So this is going to be very interesting with S7-1200 PLC. So let's see, what do we have in this video? We will start with the first task, which says, set up the Profinet communication with S7-1200 PLC and organize the information to be read-write in the S7-1200 PLC. So first step is we have to set up the communication via Profinet. Now, when we talk about Profinet, we definitely want to know the IP addresses. So you need to know what's the IP address of your PLC and your controller. If you don't know about your IP address of your controller, you can also configure that in the Siemens PLC program. So we're going to see that in the next steps. But here, the important fact is you need to install a GST file, which you can find on the Banner Engineering website, the link I can provide in the resources. GST file will help Siemens PLC to recognize the hardware. So it's like a hardware catalog you need to know from the device. And then you need to assign the IP address, Profinet name, and start rewriting the data. So let's see these steps in detail. So first step is we have to make sure our industrial Ethernet configuration is set to Profinet. This you can do that in your SC10 controller. So for example here, right now I'm in the live mode. I can go out from here. And here you can check network settings. And when you click on that, And if you wanna see that here in Ethernet column here, that's where you can select your Profinet. So you can also select Modbus, Ethernet IP assemblies, Ethernet IP messages, and PCC or Profinet. So in this example, we'll just focus on the Profinet. So make sure your industrial Ethernet is selected to Profinet and here your network is enabled. And let's see what are the next steps. So this we have configured, select Profinet as communication interface, use auto configure. Now this is this is very important. Once we are communicating via Profinet, we need to know which data you want to read and write. One thing is you can just click on the empty slot and you can define what you want to send via Profinet. For example, track input, track input fault, track any input fault. You can select from any of these options. If you're not sure what you want to select or if you just want to make a trial, you can click on auto configure. When you do that, the software will automatically assign some slots with some functions. For example, slot 0 says M0 MR1 reset needed. We know that from this functional view, when the reset is needed, let's go online and check. So I will go online in this case. Now, at the moment, I don't need a reset. My outputs are working fine. Let's break the circuit. So I'm gonna start my controller and then I'm gonna break the circuit. So you can, you can see my hardware kit on the camera and I'm gonna break the circuit. Now the circuit is break. My one of the output is false. So now if I bring back the circuit, I have an indication which means reset is required. This is the status which we can send via industrial ethernet and via Profinet to the PLC. So this is the function when your reset is required in your circuit. Similarly, you have several other status. System lockout, track any input fault, track output fault, track your magnetic switch, track door switch, or track e-stop. These we have seen in the last videos, these functions. All right, so once you have configured the slots with the functions, last is you have to enable the circuit. This we have already done that. Let's move on to step two. Step two is we have to install GST file in our Siemens PLC program. So I'm using TR portal in this case. To install the GST file, you can go to this link, you can download the file, and then you have to go to options and click on manage general station description files. Once you click that, you can install the file. And if it's already installed, you will see your status here. And this I can show you in my Siemens PLC program. So if I go here, option, manage files. So since I have already installed it, you can see that this is already installed. And this GSD file is provided by Banner Engineering. So every hardware manufacturer provides you a GSD file 
for its own device. So this step is also done. Once this is done, we have to navigate to the hardware catalog. This you can find in the Siemens VLC program. Once the GSD file is installed, you can go to hardware catalog, type banner and press enter. And then you will see your banner safety controller. All you have to do is just drag and drop in your network window. Once you do that, this hardware catalog is here. And once you have this here, you just have to connect these together. This you might already know if you know Siemens PLC programming. If you're new to Siemens PLC programming, you can learn Siemens PLC programming from one of my basic and advanced course. To get more details, check out the banner on the top. All right, once this is connected to the PLC, you can go inside by double click and then you will see all the addresses of this S710 controller. This is also explained in the next step. So here is all my IOs, which are already configured via this GSD file. And I, all I have to just do is I have to read this IOs in a PLC tag in my Siemens PLC. For example, here, you will see four status byte. And here you can see slot one. Slot one, you can connect or relate that with the slot one, which is here. So slot one says it's M0 colon MR1 reset needed, and that's my first bit. So if you see this one here, slot one is input address I1 to I4. So th the address of this function is I1.0. So this is I1.0. And rest we don't need to read because this is not defined here. Similarly for slot three, you can see here slot three is here. The address is starting from I9. So the first address of this slot is I9.0 and I9.1, 9.2. Similarly for the magnetic switch, it's slot five, which is I17. So I17.0.1.2. And similarly for slot 10, you have I37.0 and dot one. This is what I've done in my PLC tag. If I show you in banner, I can split this window. And here you can see that. So the first one was slot one, I1.0. This is my, this is my tag SC10 manual reset required. So I just use this reset needed or reset required as a name here. So here I'm gonna read the feedback from this controller. And then similarly, you have for RO1 status and RO2 status, which is here. This is slot 10. Slot 10 is 37, so I37.0.1, and so on. And not only the status, you can also read virtual non-safety inputs. This is the inputs which you can read from PLC. We'll come to that later. So once you have your tag defines, once you have your hardware catalog, just download this program in your Siemens PLC and go to online. If you want to have this PLC program, you can download that. More information is given in the link. So let's go online. And now once we are online, you will see the status in my PLC tags. So I will just make it bigger and try to monitor. And now you can see that my RO1 status and RO2 status is true. So let's bring that window a little bit here. And if you can see in my camera, my outputs are true. My relay is true. So if I break the circuit again, now you can see that R01 status is false. This I'm reading by Profinet from the SC10 controller. And once I bring back the sensor, the sensor you can also see this magnetic switch is false. Once I bring this back, you can see this is true. And you can see that here reset required is also true. So all I have to do is just go and press reset and it will reset the circuit. This is very interesting. Very easily, you can read the information of your safety controller in your PLC. Further on, you can also take these values in your HMI, and you can display that easily on your touchscreen. This was the task of this video. I hope you like it and you find it very easy to interface s 10 controller with S7200 PLC. For reference, you can take this PLC program and the banner program just to check it out. So this we have already seen. You can go online, verify the signals, and these signals you can also see here. If you go to the live mode, you can see the signal here or in the functional mode or in the wiring diagram. So this was the task of this video. In the next video, we will see how we can include an emergency stop in the Siemens VLC and sending this value to the SC10 controller 
to trigger the circuit. Let's see that in the next video. Thank you.